Welcome back. So do you know who Robert L. Peters is? How about Robin Ware or J.R.B. Ware? These are the known fake names that then-Vice President Joe Biden used in several email exchanges. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer is now demanding to see those emails. They are unredacted emails. Uh, he wants them released from the National Archives involving these pseudonyms, in addition to any interactions between Joe and Hunter with Ukraine and Burisma officials. This says some House Republicans are pushing for an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. Uh, GOP Florida Congressman Greg Stubbe has already moved forward with his own articles of impeachment, calling the Biden family's business deals treasonous activity. Joining me right now is House Majority Leader Steve Scalise. And Mr. Majority Leader, it's great to have you this weekend. Thanks so much for being here this weekend. Uh, it's always great to be with you, Maria. Thanks for having me. I'd like to know about these alias names of Joe Biden. What can you tell us about it? Was he using different names to uh, conceal money moving uh, into these 20 shell companies that were set up while he was vice president that we've heard about from the House Oversight Committee chairman? Well, Maria, lots unknown on this still. You know, it was Jamie Comer's oversight committee that just uncovered it. We've been sending a lot of letters to a lot of agencies to get information. We've had whistleblowers, of course, come forward with some real bombshells that have created more stirs and actually caused the White House to change their tune on things. Remember, you know, in the early days for months, Corrine Jean-Pierre said, oh, no, Joe never talked about business with Hunter, never. And she said it over and over and over again until we had whistleblowers come forward and said, not only did he talk business with Hunter, he went to dinners and lunches and coffees with business uh, people that he was dealing with and including foreign governments. And then the next day, mysteriously, the White House changed their tune and said, well, he wasn't in business. And so I think you're going to see on the pseudonym, why would a president of the United States, or in this case, when Joe Biden was vice president of the United States, have fake names that he was using on his documents. We uncovered this just recently, going through some of our back and forth with the National Archives. And again, Comer's committee has been digging to get this information. Now that we have it, and I think they would deliberately set it up to make it harder for you, me, the media, the, the, the Congress to find out any of this information. Well, we're now finding it out. And as we find it out, we're going to go back and look under more pseudonames, look under this pseudonym. But it begs the question, why did Joe Biden use fake names? We know he used fake companies. All the shell corporations, a shell corporation is a fancy term for a fake corporation. And he was using dozens of them to hide over $20 million of payments to his family, not just Hunter Biden, his whole family. Uh, so there's a lot of dirty smelling corruption around all of this. And we're going to keep digging. We've got uh, the attorney general coming before Jim Jordan's committee on September 20th. And I think a lot of people are going to be interested in what he has to say. We have subpoenas out to a number of other FBI agents, but we still have more whistleblowers coming forward, Maria. And they're the ones that have really given us the true background, because as we're hearing one side of a story from some of these federal agencies, the whistleblowers are telling us a different tune. And then when we get people under oath and we confront them with what the whistleblower said, they change their tune. Everybody's changing their story. The White House is. Some of these federal agencies are. You know who's not changing their story? The whistleblowers, Maria. Uh, where is the impeachment uh, activity? Are you in favor of an impeachment inquiry? Yeah, and if you look at this, you know, and I've been talking to Jim Jordan a lot about this because ultimately we go through his committee, the Judiciary Committee, because every time we find something, it leads to more serious questions. So it sounds like the priorities when you all come back in September will be a potential impeachment inquiry, but also keeping the government uh, open. Congressman, I feel like uh, we've got another potential government shutdown looming. Uh, you've got 12 spending bills, the appropriations process. They're still in limbo. Speaker McCarthy is suggesting a short-term extension of last year's spending priorities. But Axios is reporting that you may have a Republican revolution uh, if that takes place. Uh, tell me what happens here. Will the government uh, run out of money? We're going to take uh, care of our responsibility to properly fund the government, but also to scrutinize this government. Uh, there is a yeah. lot of scrutiny that needs to happen with the trillions of dollars that have gone out the door, some of it fraudulently, where Biden doesn't even care. 
We've highlighted it, fraudulent payments, in some cases going to foreign countries, and they don't even care. This is your taxpayer money, going to illegals, going to foreign countries, and yet they want to just keep blowing that money out of the door. So we're going after that, too, in these appropriations bills. Well, uh, Joe Biden wants more money. He's got a supplemental ask right now for $40 billion. Yeah, why doesn't he take it, by the way, from some of the illegal payments that we've identified, COVID money, that was supposed to be for people suffering from COVID, small business owners trying to keep their workers uh, on the payroll. Mm. And instead, some of that money went to foreign countries. Some of that money went to people here illegally. And we've highlighted it. And the Biden administration doesn't care. They won't go after any of this. They won't work with us to go and claw that money back. The taxpayers deserve that money back. Uh, so if he wants to look for a place to find the money, there's one place right there, Maria. Wow. So in terms of the continuing resolution, is that what we should expect? Well, we still have a few weeks left when we return in September uh, to try to get agreements. There are some negotiations okay. going on right now, even though we're not in D.C., we're negotiating on some of the bills we passed out of committee. Uh, if the Democrats want to work with us on reining in government spending and on getting some of these federal agencies under control who are out of control, uh, then we have an opportunity to get some of that done right now. If they want to defend the status quo, we're going to have a big fight coming in a few weeks. All right. We will be watching all of that. We so appreciate your time. Congressman, thank you. Always great to be with you. Thanks, Maria. And to you, House Majority Leader Steve Scalise. I've got one important thing you need to know about ahead of next week. That's next.